Hi, it's Pola from Pola Quilting. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm going back to this template today again. I just like to have versatile tools and use them as much as I can. So since I've got this template, I will use it again. So this is the first tutorial I've used it and this is the second tutorial I've used it and I'll put both links in the description below. If you want to make your own, um, the, the sizes for this one are in the first tutorial but we'll be making another one for today's uh, tutorial so you can kind of uh, follow the steps with just bigger square so this template was based on a square of the size 9 inches now um, today for, for tutorial I would like to make a second one I still use that one but I want a second one so I will use six and a half inch uh, square because I've got a ruler of that size you can choose whatever other size you've got available it's just it's easier when you have a ruler uh, of the size of the block you will be doing later so I'll be squaring up the block to six and a half inches so just make it convenient so what I need is a piece of paper which I can cut the shape from uh, I've got like a little bit thicker here paper, but you can use carton board, you know, I don't know, cereal box, whatever you've got available. So, so first, like I said, I will just cut the square and I will actually need two and I will show you wh why in a minute. So let's just cut two squares. That's one. Doesn't have to be perfect though. This, th this template doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, because we're going to be doing uh, more or less wonky blocks so it doesn't have to be exact but uh, just as close as possible so that's the second one okay and I will also cut one nine inch square again I will show you in a minute why I need a second uh, square for this uh, bigger template okay so I've got all my squares cut out so let's sort the small square first so again you need to decide this is going to be block you need to decide how kind of wide you want this section to be and I will go and you know you can just draw it first and see how it looks and then adjust the lines so if I go with three inches maybe because remember you also take off some for the seam allowance three maybe too much let's go with two and a half so let me draw the lines how it will look if I go with two and a half inches again it doesn't have to be perfect we're doing wonky blocks so it's okay I think I'll be happy with that block if it looks like this so if I want to have my middle section that exactly size I need to cut a little bit wider obviously because I need to uh, allow for the similar one so I just go and I will cut more or less quarter inch outside but again it doesn't have to be exact so that's one side and second side good with that one now I'm going to be using today actually a bigger piece of scrap and I will show you that in a minute and because of that um, and because I've got limited amount of that fabric I would like to make sure that when I will add the sides uh, to my middle I use as least as possible fabric I'm happy to patch it up you know I, I love extra seams in my uh, fabric but just to you know uh, minimize the time needed and maximize the fabric uh, so if I do my template again here which is that's my line with the similar one so I need to account for it as well I just need one side really so that's my line from the template it's matching this one then I will add quarter inch allowance from uh, that side where I added it so that's where I would have been and I will add, add another maybe half an inch to it just to you know um, account for any wonkiness I may have so basically, when I cut it now, this will be my side of this kind of uh, square. So if I cut my fabric pieces to this shape, one side and then the other side, I will have my square to square up. So I will go with that one. So this is why I wanted to cut another 9 inch square, because I need to do the same thing. Um, 
for my piece here so I'll just draw a line where would they meet and then again I will add about half an inch to it just to make sure that obviously I'm covering <coughs> the seam allowances I'll probably add a little bit more maybe two, three quarters of an inch so I'm covering seam allowances on both sides plus any wonkiness so I want to cut my fabric for that bigger block like this so again when I cut from one side and when I cut from the other side I will be able to square it up to nine inches so now I'm good to go to show you what design we are making today so I will be using um, crumbs I've got brown crumbs and also I want to show you one crumb I've made and I actually use the same fabric I just had some strips and strips and strips from the same fabric because I've used uh, that fabric as a backing for my quilt and you know when you trim it all around I had all of those strips left over so I just stitched it together and I've got a piece of fabric now I can use so uh, I will start with those so from the same fabric of the from the same type of fabric because I will be using crumbs as well so obviously it's not the same but I will use some plain fabrics as well just to show you how they kind of look different uh, depending what you use I'll be cutting one small template and one big template and obviously again depends what the fabric you use it will look different so I'm just going to trim it again it doesn't have to be exact because we will be um, squaring up the block later and you could possibly you know put two or three layers of the fabric to go in one go just go all around the pattern to prepare that middle section that's my center of my smaller block and I will do the same thing this goes back to kind of to the pile maybe not those mini ones but this can go back if I stitch it together I will probably make another block and I will do the same thing with the big one so I don't know if you can see it very well I'm not actually aligning it exactly to the template I just want to have a straight line more or less as the template but it doesn't have to be exact on the same line let me show you the scraps I'll be using now so I went to scrap shop I think it was to visit a before and I found a big bundle of this yellow fabric it's got like a small leaves on it it's beautiful but as you can see somebody cut out something out of it and it's very irregular <laughs> But I had a lot of it, so it will be, you know, it will make nice background fabric. I just need to make sure that I will use my template to, like I said, do not cut more than I need, and then obviously I'm happy to crumb it up later for if I'm missing something. So what I will do, let's work on the bigger block first. So I've got my template. I can fold fabric into half or work individually. Depends what you're working from. You, you, you know, your process might be a little bit different. So if I fold the fabric, I can kind of cut both shapes in one go. I just go from this edge, and then hopefully I could make turn it around, and I can make another two on this side. So I will have a background for two blocks. So I just make it a little bit smaller just to fit that piece I will just draw a line here just to that check that I can cut both you know two times here yes I've got enough here so that's fine so I cut my one side and then I will cut my other side Again here it doesn't have to be exactly as the template, we will be trimming block later, but the closer it is, you know, the less um, waste of the fabric. Normally if I'm using scraps and strips and strings and things like that, I don't think about it that much. But if you look, if you're working from a bigger piece or you've got fat quarters, then obviously you want to cut 
as many shapes as possible uh, from the same piece. So the first part of the process is very easy. I just literally want to sew it on my uh, middle section. Nothing complicated. I will sew one side, take it to the iron board, open it up, iron the seam, and then I will possibly may need to trim something here if it's sticking too much to make a nice uh, and flat line on this side. And then I will add uh, the second part and again open it up. Seam, uh, seam directions doesn't matter, they won't match with anything, whatever the fabric takes you do it. So I will cut uh, the same size for my smaller block as well using my template and I've got again uh, from the visit from the scrap, so very successful recently, this nice green uh, fabric as a background so I will use that for the smaller blocks. Just a quick reminder when you're sewing those two pieces together make sure that the top one is sticking out a little bit to account for the angles so when you open it up it will align better than anything unless you're using much bigger uh, pieces and then you obviously will be squaring it up later. Uh, but because I've used template, they're more or less fitting, uh, you know, well. So I just make sure that it's sticking out at least quarter inch here. If it's sticking quarter, it should be just about enough uh, for that aligning to happen. I've got uh, both of my blocks ready, so I can square them up now. So the bigger one is 9 inch and the smaller one will be 6.5 inch square. Uh, so in this pattern I'm not measuring anything, I just want to have a square here and that's it. Uh, nothing will need to line up with anything anyway, so we're good to go. So. For the next step I need a, a squares and for smaller block I would say anything between three and a half to four and a half inch will be fine so you can have a look in your uh, scrap buckets where you're cutting maybe to certain sizes if you have something that will go with the fabric you've got in the middle and for the bigger one I would say anything between I don't know maybe five to six and a half inch you can go even bigger if you like it but again if you're cu cutting your scraps to certain sizes you might um, have a look there and obviously match up something. So I do cut my scraps to four and a half and I do cut my uh, scraps to six and a half inches so I use those but I don't necessarily want all of those um, blocks with the same uh, square there so I might kind of trim them a little bit uh, as well just to have a little bit of variety and movement on my pattern. So let's get my uh, squares first. So here are my squares, six and a half and four and a half uh, from my uh, bucket. I mean, I didn't have to choose the same one for the same bottoms. That's, that's you know, choice preference. You can choose different shades. Uh, you can use contrasting you col colors. You can use something matching. It's, you know, it's all uh, scrappy and colorful, so everything will go. So I will draw uh, lines on diagonal here from corner to corner on both of my uh, squares. And I will snowball this part where the spike is. So I will put it this way. I will sew on the line and then I will go and sew another line here about half an inch lower. So this is a lot of fabric that will make a nice block as well. So there is no point of losing it. So that will be one. And I will do exactly the same thing on my uh, larger block. Snowball the top where the spike is. So on the line and then about uh, half an inch lower, uh, another line here. You can draw it if you feel like you need some support there. It's kind of sometimes, this is quite a big piece of fabric, so it's not that easy uh, to eyeball it. So it might be a good idea to draw another line. And then I will have a second block from it, which I can use either within this project or another project. Okay, so I will sew it and I will show you how it looks and what the next step is. So here are my cool mushrooms already and uh, you could possibly try to sew them already but you know they will be wonky if you sew them like that. The other option is you could sew four mushrooms like this together, obviously with the same size. 
I have a different pattern altogether or use the bigger one, smaller one with some frame here to match them up the size have those two and then maybe turn around on the other side you know you already got some options with the layouts but let's carry on so here is my mushroom and I want to have it kind of straight so I want to add the um, pieces here to match it up and I will just use my method you know uh, easy square in a square because that will actually fit perfectly what I need to do with it so what I will need is a 9 inch square out of my scraps because I'm working with this type of scraps where you know the fabric is limited I probably won't work with uh, more than um, two blocks at the time from one background because I do want to have the same fabric here and then all around uh, my uh, mushroom I can have a different background across the board uh, you know for the whole design but this I would like to match that so it kind of makes that uh, mushroom to stand out from the fabric so let's see I've got nine here so yeah in some point of time I probably will need to start making some crumbs uh, from the same fabric to use as a background or as a you know that uh, sides of the mushroom I'm happy with it like I said I do like um, extra seams I think they're adding to the design as you can see those extra seams here just making the pattern of the mushroom that looks really cool so don't afraid to use a fabric like that if you have something nice nice piece of fabric you want to use every piece of it so I just trimmed it to the nine inch kind of strip first before I cut the shape again just to maximize uh, what I can do with this fabric there's a uh, um, salvage here I need to cut out and then other side so the next step I've covered a few times already easy square in the square again I will pop some uh, um, tutorials where I've used that method uh, for idea for you uh, but here it's going to be very good especially when I'm going to be um, squaring it up because I do not necessarily want my um, mushroom top and bottom some pointy and that this method will kind of fix that problem uh, very easily so I'm just putting my fabric on top of my mushroom and I will just sew all around um, with the quarter inch allowance and then we'll go to the next step So the next step as usual I'm just drawing a line on diagonal from corner seam to corner seam not necessarily the block itself it may not have been sewn very straight which is fine on this occasion so just corner to corner and I will cut my fabric here in the middle where this kind of that cross meets I want a little bit of slit there so then I can put my scissors in and cut on the lines and you want to go to the very tip of that fabric my scissors are not sharp at the tip so I'm just gonna have to add, uh, take something else to finish it off that's fine I just do that quickly okay so when I open my mushroom up now uh, I will take it now to the iron and then we're going to square it up okay so now with my squaring up I can tackle that issue of, of the pointy mushrooms and pointy bottoms um, so I just need to decide uh, where I want to go with it so I think if I square it up to 11 inches uh, that will already kind of take off a little bit of here and then remember once I sew it to something else again it will take a quarter inch from top of it as well so it will be nice and uh, not pointy anymore <laughs> so I'm just eyeballing more or less to be in the center it doesn't have to be exact you know none of those pieces were exact either so it's okay and I will just square it up here that's 11 inch block nice big block uh, if you just decide to go with the, those bigger blocks you will have quilt in no time and also if you have a, lots of brownish 
or even other colors, um, shades that will make a nice uh, pattern as well to put in the middle. Maybe stripey here and then checkered here combination. That will look awesome. Here you go, my mushroom number one ready. Let me quickly make the, the smaller one and few more and I will pop them on the design board and we'll see what we can make out of those. So let me quickly introduce you to my finished mushrooms and some extra bits which came out from this project. So the smaller mushrooms I have squared up to seven and a half inches. Uh, the bigger ones uh, are 11 inches so obviously they don't match as is. Uh, if I want to put all of it together I need to add um, some sort of extra uh, either strip somewhere all around or sashing uh, or something like that. Now I haven't put it together yet because I'm planning to add another block to the mix so I don't know yet what the um, layout will finish as. And uh, let's just go quickly through individual blocks so you can kind of see how I've mixed my uh, scraps together for the for the results. So um, this is the first one. So I've used, uh, as mentioned, that uh, crumb, which is same uh, fabric, just stitched together. I had some leftovers from uh, squaring up uh, quilts, so I've put it all together. And now I've cut out those um, uh, shapes uh, for the bottom of the mushroom. It really looks nice from far. You don't even know it's the different strips, but from when you're looking at close, it just adds that extra texture to the block. I really like that effect. So you know, experiment with extra seams. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so that's one block uh, here. The same, uh, same middle, uh, just different color of the top mushroom, different background. I I try to keep the background to the brighter or uh, shades or something really mellow so they those mushrooms can pop up in this next one i used the orange brown ish colors of the crumb and for the background i used a uh, fabric i had uh, cut out from the bedding but i've used the left side as a right side because the left side was um, brighter and mellower and that's the effect i wanted for the background you know the, and the front was a little bit more um juicy and I didn't want that so same here with this one flower leaf uh, fabric which I've used as a background so again I use the left side as a front uh, so it's a little bit more uh, kind of you know uh, solid-ish rather than that juicy colors on the right side and again crump in the middle and the shirt fabric as the top of the mushroom with the small ones very similar combination so it's the plain fabric or the left side uh, crumbs in the middle or crumbs with the same fabric in the middle um, you can really use anything you've got in your stash to make those uh, and even for those uh, squares to make them you know the easy square in the square method just if you if you have a few smaller pieces stitch them together and then use that square uh, to make that effect it will just really add to the design and from the cutouts when we were making the shape of the um, top mushroom I've got those smaller blocks which I uh, trimmed to two sizes because I was using two sizes of the initial square and again we can put them in few combinations you can use it as uh, perhaps as a sashing somewhere that's the you know cornerstone of the sashing for those for those blocks you can use it in the part of the border if you like or just put them aside and use them all together as a separate uh, design so here just a few pictures how perhaps you can set them up. Like I said, if you won't just use the mushrooms in your quilt, I would suggest you you use some sort of uh, sashing or just add the board, small border around each block individually from the same color I would suggest as the background just to set up those uh, mushrooms even uh, better. Thank you very much for joining me today for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed the... <laughs> A mushroom bonanza uh, pattern. The shop restock is coming this Wednesday. Uh, I'm, I've done my best to squeeze as many things as I could but between the full-time job, making tutorials, taking care of my family, uh, you know there's only that much time you can spend on uh, additional activities uh, but the rest of will happen hopefully every month with some other items and I'm working on my first jackets which will be added to the shop. Uh, sometime towards the end of the year as well. So if you subscribe to my website you will be immediately notified um, if new stuff is added, uh, whether it's the pouches, bags or whatever else I will come up with. So uh, thank you very much for, to those who subscribed already both to this channel and to my website. You can also find me on Pinterest, um, Facebook and 
Instagram where I post uh, very often about what I'm doing so if you like to track where I'm going with my stuff uh, it might be uh, good to uh, follow me there as well on the all the links are in the description below thank you for joining thank you for watching and see you next time